This weekend we conclude our three-part series on stewardship. As I noted at the start of the series, stewardship isn't just another Catholic buzzword, but it can, it's summed up with a line from scriptures, from 1 Peter, that is, each one has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God-varied grace. So as Christian stewards, we are to receive God's gifts gratefully, then cultivate them responsibly, sharing them lovingly with the others, and in that way we return what has been given to us back to the Lord. So last weekend, Father Cordy would have talked about returning to the Lord of our time and our talent, time especially in regard to time in prayer, as any relationship needs time, and so it's the same way with our relationship with God. Also, God has given us each unique gifts and talents, and so these are given to us, not just for ourselves, but that they may be given to others. Um, The Holy Spirit, in fact, gives every single one of us specific charisms, certain gifts that are used to increase the Lord's life in others. They're evangelizing, really, in their nature, and the Spirit empowers us for the benefit of others. So this week, as was pointed out by the parish representatives for the finance councils, uh, giving the financial reports before Mass, uh, we're moving to the third area where we're called to be stewards, time, talent, and now treasure. In addition to seeing the financial reports so that we're transparent about how your generous gifts are being used at our parish, you'll also have received a report about your own um, giving from this past year. In, in the scriptures, and, and especially Jesus, they address money quite often. It's almost surprising how much they do. And we didn't actually plan it this way, but even, even today's gospel, money is brought up again. Jesus is asked about the question of having to pay the tax, the Roman tax. Um, because while a great deal of good can come from the use of money, you know, hopefully we are seeking to gain money, not just to accumulate it for ourselves, but so that we can use it for the good of our, our families. And, um, but money can also have a tendency to bring about evil if it's used improperly. St. Paul says in his letter to Timothy that the love of money is the root of all evils. And some people in their desire for it have strayed from the faith and have pierced themselves with many pains. Uh, an example of that that I can think of is how much it saddens me whenever I see families uh, fighting against each other um, when, you know, it has to do with an inheritance of money or, or lands. Jesus says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and decay can destroy and thieves break in and steal, but rather store up treasures in heaven. You cannot serve both God and and mammon. So we should notice there that it's, it's the love of money, or what Jesus calls mammon, that becomes the issue which could lead to evil, not, not money itself. And to improperly seek earthly wealth above everything else, that's what becomes destructive within our hearts. So how do we make sure that money has a proper place in our lives? Well, by following Jesus' command that we hear in the gospel tonight, to repay to God what belongs to God. You see, for us as Christians, money is never our final goal. Our final goal, our final treasure is heaven. And that's why our financial support has spiritual effects for both ourselves and for those who receive based upon our gifts. Sacred Scripture teaches us the concept of tithing. Going all the way back to Leviticus, a tenth of all you produce is the Lord's, and it is holy. And the purpose of tithing, Scripture says, is to teach us to always put God first in our life. Proverbs say, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with your first fruits of your produce. Then will your barns be filled with plenty, With new wine, your vats will overflow. And as I was praying through this and preparing for the homily tonight, what struck me most from from these scripture passages and others is, you know, how do we consider our giving? 
Do we look at our giving as, you know, whatever's extra that we happen to have left over after we take care of all the other things in our life? Or do we look at it the way that God looks at it in these scripture passages? You know, God asks us to give 10%, but he asks for the first 10%, the first fruits, not the last 10% of what we have. He asks not for the leftovers, but for that which comes first of our time, our talent, and our treasure. And that's how we will truly repay to God what belongs to God. So, you know, when you receive the mailing uh, for your previous contributions, you're, we're also asked again this year to prayerfully consider what we might do in our future giving. Now, consider this year giving from your first fruits. Now, our 10% return from what we have received, giving that back to God, can be divided up. Suggestion is 5% to personal charities, 4 to to our parish, you know, to one's diocese. The the first 5% to some kind of good cause that helps those in need. The church speaks about having a preferential option for those who are poor. And so our parishes have funds to help those who come to us in need. There are many different charities out there that you can choose from. We have collections that are built in throughout the year. Uh, Catholic Relief Services, Peter's Pence, Catholic Charities, Black and Indian Missions, uh, World Mission Sunday, which actually happens to be this weekend. It's World Mission Sunday. Um, Second, to give the 4% back to our parish, because this is the place where we experience the Lord, uh, where our faith grows and we receive the sacraments. Uh, Our mailings have helpful calculations in, in them to assist us in figuring out, you know, what our weekly contributions would be if we decide to use these tithing percentages. And finally, the, we're asked to contribute 1% to our diocese. And one of the main ways that we do that here in our archdiocese is through the Archbishop's Annual Appeal, which we're actually supposed to be starting also at this time. Um, so it's a good time to talk about it. You receive, we receive a letter each year from the Archbishop encouraging us to participate, and each parish has a goal Holy Trinity's is just over 45,000, and St. Michael's is about 23, just over 2,300. And, and I know the annual appeal, appeal can sometimes be a hard sell, because we might feel the money would be better spent staying out here in the rural area rather than sending it over up, out to Omaha. And you might even feel, why should I support it? Because, you know, they've made us go through all this journey of faith, all the changes and sorrows and everything that's come from it. And sometimes I, too, can feel like, you know, the Archdiocesan offices exist to make my job harder sometimes. But the reality is, is it's it's quite the opposite. There's many services and resources that a parish or priest can't do on their own. And, you know, just to give you a couple of those, the finance office in the Archdiocese helps all of our bookkeepers in making sure everything's properly handled, especially with, you know, changing laws or when we have new staff, you know, it's pretty essential trying to you know, bring together all these seven parishes and, and sorting through all that. And the tribunal through the archdiocese works with marriage annulment cases to, to train us how to petition. They judge the cases so that um, the situations may be resolved. Um, Catholic Schools Office helps support our Catholic schools to ensure all the policies and requirements are fulfilled, collaborating with principals, with curriculum and assessment and, and many other things. And even the Pastoral Planning Office that we might not like, having to make us go through all the changes, um, we need the resources and assistance from them, not just for the structural changes, but also so that we can go through cultural changes in our parishes so that we can go on mission and evangelize. And so our generous support of the annual appeal is to ensure that our entire Catholic family is taken care of across the entire archdiocese. Now, I grew up in a farming family where money wasn't always abundant, and we were taught, you know, to save and not to live beyond our means. You know, so my own personal tendency is not to spend a whole lot on myself, but it doesn't give me an excuse not to give back to the Lord. You know, and if we give, we will never outdo God in his generosity. It says in the sacred scriptures, bring your whole tithe to my storehouse 
Test me in this, says the Lord, and see if I do not open the floodgates of heaven to you and pour down upon you blessing without measure. So I thank you for your generosity to the annual appeal. Thank you for your generosity to our parishes and our schools. Thank you for the many different ways that you support other good causes and impacting others that are in need. Perhaps people that we may never see in this life, but hopefully we'll meet in the life to come. And I encourage you to prepare, prayerfully consider how you may make a return to the Lord for this coming year.